Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark A man with a withered hand And Jesus entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil? To save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth, and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Comments from the Church Fathers Theophylact of Ocrid After confounding the Jews, who had blamed his disciples, for pulling the ears of corn on the Sabbath day, by the example of David, the Lord now further bringing them to the truth, works a miracle on the Sabbath showing that, if it is a pious deed to work miracles on the Sabbath for the health of men, it is not wrong to do on the Sabbath thing necessary for the body. He says therefore, and he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. St. Bede. 4. Since he had defended the breaking of the Sabbath, which they objected to his disciples, by an approved example, now they wish, by watching him, to calumniate himself, that they might accuse him of a transgression, if he cured on the Sabbath, of cruelty or of folly, if he refused. It goes on, and he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand in the midst. Pseudochrysostom. Jesus placed him in the midst, surely so that they would be terrified of his appearance, and having seen him, they would have compassion on him and put away malice. St. Bede. And anticipating the calumny which the Jews had prepared for him, he rebuked them, for they violated the precepts of the law with a depraved temptation, wherefore it follows, and he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days, or to do evil? To save life, or to kill? Jesus asks them this question because they thought that on the Sabbath one should also rest from doing good works, whereas the law commands them to abstain from evil deeds, saying, and in it you shall do no servile work, Leviticus 23 verse 7, that is, no sin, for whoever commits a sin is a servant of sin. In the same way, what I had said beforehand, to save a person's soul or to lose it. That is, to heal a man or not, not because God, supremely good, can be the author of our perdition, but because, when he does not save, Scripture customarily says that he loses. And if anyone is troubled by the fact that the Lord, who is about to heal the body, has asked about the salvation of the soul, let him know that, according to the custom of Scripture, it is either said soul instead of man, just as it is said, these are the souls that came out of Jacob's thigh, Exodus 1 verse 5, or because he performed those miracles for the salvation of the soul. Or because the very healing of the hand meant the salvation of the soul. St. Augustine De Consensu Evangelist Arum, 2, 35. But some one may wonder how Matthew could have said, that they themselves asked the Lord, if it was lawful to heal on the Sabbath day, when Mark rather relates that they were asked by our Lord, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day, or to do evil? Therefore we must understand that they first asked the Lord, if it was lawful to heal on the Sabbath day, then that understanding their thoughts, 
and that they were seeking an opportunity to accuse him, he placed in the middle him whom he was about to cure, and put those questions, which Mark and Luke relate. We must then suppose, that when they were silent, he propounded the parable of the sheep, and concluded, that it was lawful to do good on the Sabbath day. It goes on, but they were silent. Pseudochrysostom. For they knew that he would certainly cure him. It goes on, and looking round about upon them with anger. His looking round upon them in anger, and being saddened at the blindness of their hearts, is fitting for his humanity, which he deigned to take upon himself for us. He connects the working of the miracle with a word, which proves that the man is cured by his voice alone. It follow therefore, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. Answering by all these things for his disciples, and at the same time shewing that his life is above the law. St. Bede. But mystically, the man with a withered hand shews the human race, dried up as to its fruitfulness in good works, but now cured by the mercy of the Lord, the hand of man, which in our first parent had been dried up when he plucked the fruit of the forbidden tree, through the grace of the Redeemer, who stretched his guiltless hands on the tree of the cross, has been restored to health by the juices of good works. Well too was it in the synagogue that the hand was withered, for where the gift of knowledge is greater, there also the danger of inexcusable guilt is greater. Pseudo-Jerome. Or else it means the avaricious, who, being able to give had rather receive, and love robbery rather than making gifts. And they are commanded to stretch forth their hands, that is, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hand the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Ephesians 4 verse 28. Theophylact of Ocrid. Or, he had his right hand withered, who does not the works which belong to the right side, for from the time that our hand is employed in forbidden deeds, from that time it is withered to the working of good. But it will be restored whenever it stands firm in virtue, wherefore Christ saith, Arise, that is, from sin, and stand in the midst, that thus it may stretch itself forth neither too little nor too much. St. Bede, in Markham, 1, 15. The Pharisees, thinking it a crime that at the word of the Lord the hand which was diseased was restored to a sound state, agreed to make a pretext of the words spoken by our Saviour. Wherefore it is said, and the Pharisees went forth, and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. As if every one amongst them did not greater things on the Sabbath day, carrying food, reaching forth a cup, and whatever else is necessary for meals. Neither could he, who said and it was done, be convicted of toiling on the Sabbath day. Theophylact of Ocrid. But the soldiers of Herod the king are called Herodians, because a certain new heresy had sprung up, which asserted that Herod was the Christ. For the prophecy of Jacob intimated that when the princes of Judah failed then Christ should come, because therefore in the time of Herod none of the Jewish princes remained, and he, an alien, was the sole ruler, some thought that he was the Christ, and set on foot this heresy. These, therefore, were with the Pharisees trying to kill Christ. St. Bede. Or else he calls Herodians the servants of Herod the Tetrarch, who on account of the hatred which their Lord had for John, pursued with treachery and hate the Saviour also, whom John preached. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the Gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Please.